Welcome to Widow Too Soon. This is Mark Massaro. I'm here with my friend and co-host, Michelle Bader Ebersole. Congratulations. Thank you. I, I like saying it now because I'm all smart, you know? Right. So I, I want to ask, first I'm going to just ask, how's it going? Okay. So good. just good. Okay, good. <laughs> so right. I want to tell you what's been up with me oh, yeah, first, if that's first. okay. Yes, um, yes. So I have been um, backpacking through the Amazonian rainforest. No, you haven't. Uh, yes. I and would have I, seen pictures. You would have posted that. And I <laughs> went to Colombia and uh -huh. uh, I skydived. Uh -huh. I, I, yeah, I ran a marathon. Um, it was like, well, it wasn't just a marathon. It was three back-to-back -back marathons oh, in a row. Right. Uh -huh. So 26.2 sure. right. miles each day. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I just had to go first to get all my adventurous <laughs> stuff out of the way so yeah. that, you know, you don't show me up. I wrestled a bear. Good job. That was cool. I won. Mm -hmm. um, so that was cool. Anyways, Good no, stuff. I didn't I didn't do any of that. So but I will tell you what I did, but it's significantly <laughs> less exciting in some ways than what you've done. One thing I did do um, that was super exciting was I got to hang out with Tina. Oh, she came and visited. And yes, we had a great time. And uh, I took her to Cade's Cove. It's yeah. like a 12 mile loop um, through the Smoky Mountains. Did you run it? No, we drove <laughs> like a bunch of oh. lazy people. <laughs> okay. still but good. it's cool. There's uh, there's cool. like there's like a church that's been there since the 1700s. And obviously okay. it's not still um, in use, but you can walk into the building and see the pews and the pulpit. And I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. Like people were hearing sermons here in like the that's 1700s. Cool. Yeah. So that's kind of we didn't actually do that. <laughs> I've done it before, but we didn't do it this time. Yeah. Um, we just drove through, and um, I still haven't seen bears there. Everybody swears there's bears there. <laughs> I haven't seen them. It's probably just I'm going at the wrong time of year. So anyways, that was that was really cool. Um, I've had uh, some some hard stuff going on. Uh, it, it was, you know, like I talked about last time I was on, was um, it was three years um, mm -hmm. since Lacey went to heaven on August 13th. So it's been a while since I've recorded because I remember yeah. saying when we recorded, I remember saying it's going to be tomorrow. Um, oh, right. But now tomorrow is Lacey's birthday. Wow. Um, she would have been 38. So, yeah, August is kind of a sucky month, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, hard. I don't know, years are different than other years. You know, we've talked about grief is weird. It really is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I still I still have a lot to be thankful for. And, um, but those days were hard and that's okay to talk about. I've, I've shed several tears over the month of yeah. August. Um, you know, remembering what Lacey went through and obviously also what I went through and, um, it's, you know, it's just been, it's been kind of tough. Um, I've been, uh, working a lot, like, you know, trying to work a lot, I should say, trying to, to plug away and figure stuff out. So that's mm -hmm. been uh, it's been encouraging somewhat. I had something happen that was a huge bummer. Um, oh. yeah, I had a potential big sale and they were not getting my emails for some reason. Oh no. And I was trying everything. I was frantic. I was going back in, going through all, selecting all the listings again, sending them again, sending it to several different email addresses. And, um, one of the things I sent, I said, Hey, so did you get it this time? And, I didn't get a response for like 15, 20 minutes. And then they sent a response back and said, never mind, we're going to go with somebody else. Oh. I was like, oh, like I felt so That's stupid. Um, I don't think I did anything wrong. And Tina was really encouraging me that I didn't do anything wrong. My mother-in-law was telling right. me I didn't do anything wrong, but it just it felt didn't. like embarrassing. You know, yeah. it was just like, no, please, like, don't, no, give me, give me your sale, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. but um so anyways that's you know I, there's been some random stuff going on i've got some stuff coming up at the kids school uh luke got an award um oh, for? for uh class leader and oh, so they they pick sweet. one uh one leader from every classroom in the school and luke got it and that's awesome i'm so excited and that. it came with like a personalized note from his teacher and that she was so proud of him and um it was just awesome. It was it was awesome, and I'm so proud of him. And um, so you know, I made sure to lift him up high in the air and express to him how proud of him I was. Aww. And he's it was really cute. He's like, you know, I'm proud of myself too. 
Oh, and I, I was like, that. good job, buddy. You should be. Yeah. And so, um, so on Thursday, it's like, um, it's like grandparents day. Mm -hmm. And last year they didn't do a very good job of, um, you know, it said like grandparents day and I was like, well, right. then nobody's coming cause right. their grandparents and I know their grandparents pr probably would have flown out here, but I wasn't yeah, gonna ask them to do that. that. But, yeah. um, but it was short notice. And, um, so nobody showed up for my kids last year because mm. it was advertised as grandparents. Well, now this year they advertise that it's or any loved ones. Oh, good. And I was like, <laughs> cool. So I'm going to be grandpa. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, I get to go have lunch with Luke at school. Nice. And then um, and then he had the option of whether he wanted to be dismissed after and go home with me or if he wanted to do the rest of the day. And he's like, I want to come home with you. So yeah. we're going to have a little Our we're going to have a little boys day, <laughs> you know. Nice. Um, so I'm going to take him to give him a little reward for his award. That's um, awesome. And then tomorrow, this is the last thing. Tomorrow we are going out um, to have ice cream um, mm. in celebration of Lacey. Yeah. Because that's what she would have wanted right. <laughs> was ice cream. Mm. So anyway, so that's what's been up with me. So um, tell me about all the countries you've backpacked across <laughs> or, you know, the bungee jumping that. you've done. Oh, my goodness. Well... Oh, there is a lot this time, but I'll try to keep it short and sweet. Um, I'm, I got it written down in chronological order, some of it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, we went to Boston to visit Joel's family, his parents, and all four of his siblings and their kids. Everybody lives there. So Joel's the only one. It's kind of like how my whole family lives here, like within a couple miles. His whole family is in within a couple miles. Um, so it was very fun. Like it was back to back family events. Like literally before we got there, we had an entire agenda of what we were going to do, but it was really, really fun. Um, he had an aunt and uncle and another two aunts and then an uncle who came out um, for a birthday party. They were celebrating her 70th birthday. So we did that. We had a pool party. It was just a lot of fun. Uh, it's my second time out there. It was, last time I went, I was just his girlfriend. We weren't even engaged yet. So it was a completely different experience um, this time, you know, being his wife and like they know I'm committed, like I am part of the family now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it was it was a lot of fun. Boston's beautiful. We went to the Harvard campus um, to look oh, around. Wow. Yeah, last year we had done downtown Boston, so we didn't we didn't do tons of tourist things. There was this really cool place called Rockport. It's where they filmed the proposal. Have you seen the proposal with Sandra Bullock? Like. 2000 ish 2000 somewhere in there is it ryan reynolds also yes i think so and she has to okay like, stay in the country i don't know we're gonna watch it because we just watched it. i watched it years ago but we want to watch it because we just went to rockport i want to i don't think i've places. seen it i think i just remember seeing like the movie cover yes well good memory anyways that was filmed there that was cool so boston was like for six days um so that was good and then we had like just a couple days and so we had to train while we were there um, to do this, this thing. It's actually really famous. It's called the Hood to Coast Relay. You start at Mount Hood in Portland, like above Portland, all the way to Seaside at the beach. So it's 197 miles and you're on a team of 12. There's two vans and there's runners one through six and then seven through 12. Joel was 11. I was 12. I chose to be the last one, which is some good things, some not great things. But you're basically like they started on the top of the mountain and we met them like a little ways away from that at the, in the afternoon. And then so you have like your runner seven goes first and then you go to the next spot, wait for them, then your runner eight and so on. And I was number 12. So my first run was like 5 p.m. or something. I did great. I mean, for me, 10 minute miles are good. I'm not like super fast. I did a great 10 minute miles. It was like awesome, but I actually had grief on my run. It was so weird because I didn't know the route was going to go by this amusement park called Oaks Park, which Luke like mm. grew up going there. And then we would go there for family reunions and picnics every year. And I hadn't seen it since then. And so all of a sudden I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm at Oaks Park. So I took a couple pictures to show the kids, like, guess where I'm running by? And his mom, um, Luke's mom, I sent it to her too. Um, and I just like kind of just started like crying a little bit while I was running. And then I had like, I was listening to podcasts. I got tired of that. Changed it to like this old, like an old playlist. And it had songs that reminded me of Luke. I was like crying while I was running. It was, it was a strange thing. Grief is weird. Um, but mm -hmm. what's so great is I knew that Joel would listen to me and let me talk about it, which he did when I was done with my run. Like, whoa, that was weird. I had grief. I also had grief. Okay, so let me tell you this. So you, you do your run, and then we passed it off to the next van, and then we had like six hours till our next run. Um, 
and it was like seven or eight o'clock. So we had to like two in the morning. Um, we had a hotel, but they gave our room to someone else. Like we were just going to use it to, for everyone to take showers and rest and all of that stuff. But no, but they gave it away. We got an Airbnb. Somebody knew somebody. But it was only for like three hours. I could not fall asleep. So I had no mm. sleep. And then my run wasn't until about five or six in the morning. And so I was awake that whole time while the other runners were going. And then my second run, I just had no gas, like with no sleep. Like I had, I had to run 4.5 or something, 4.8, I don't know, close to five. And I just had no gas in the tank. But then the third run, so then after that race, I got to um, sleep in a tent for two hours on a field. So I had two hours of sleep and then I ran my third run and it was five miles and I got to end the race on the beach. You like go onto the beach and your team joins you and you all cross the finish line together. And oh, so that's it was, cool. It was cool. Like we didn't know the people in our van. Um, so we got to know all new people and it was just a great experience for Joel and I to have together. Um, like in the middle of it, you're like, what am I doing? Like I'm running on no sleep, <laughs> literally, literally <laughs> running on no sleep. So that was, uh, that was interesting. Um, it's my third time doing it. It was Joel's first time. And like the night we got home, we were so tired. And he's like, I don't ever want to do it again. And then the next day he's like, oh, we can do that again. <laughs> you know, forget how bad it is. So that's something fun. Um, I love running, but running with no sleep, I don't love so much. I'm not so good. The last time I, I just have to ask, did you listen to Eye of the Tiger in your headphones? No, I should have. Oh, that, that would have fueled you. One. It totally yeah. would have. It's mostly listening to podcasts because it just keeps my mind like busy. Yeah, um, yeah. I used to just do music I could see now. That. I'm like listening to things to make me think of other things. Um, so that was interesting. And then, oh, let me back it up. This isn't chronological order. In between Boston and Hood to Coast was what would have been um, my 20-year anniversary with Luke. And so a couple things were different about that. One being like I'm married now. Like this is my first – time being married again so it was a very strange feeling but Joel was so great like the whole day like is there anything I can do for you how are you feeling right now like just giving me space to feel whatever I need to feel um, I went to to the grave and talked to Luke in quotes I know he can't hear me I do the whole thing God please relay this to Luke and I was just basically just telling him about the kids and telling him about Joel and um, that he's taking care of us and um, but it was a strange day. Also, it was just so strange, like 20. That's a big one. Like, yeah. I've been married 20 years. And it's it's almost like, it's not a, embarrassing, but it feels weird. Joel and I have talked about this when people are like, hey, how long have you guys been married? They assume we've been married like 20 years because we are mm. in that age bracket. <laughs> and we're like, five months? And they're like, oh, really? <laughs> It's just like, it kind of feels weird. Um, but anyways, so that was one of the things um, that happened is I went there and talked to the kids a little bit about it. But they, it also was the first year that I didn't involve the kids in it. Like on our anniversary, anniversaries before, we would say this is like our family anniversary because this is the anniversary when our family started. But this year, because I was married again, it was different. They didn't really participate in it. It was more just my thing. Um, mm. So that was, that was interesting. Um a couple more, and then we'll get to the episode finally. Yeah, no problem. Um, Widow Goals was given, as we talked about before, a large amount of money, and we thought it was like 9000 um from this organization called 100 Women Who Care. I got the check. Um, the final amount was 14520 something like that. So it was over so awesome. $15,000 um, is the update amazing. amount. It's crazy. So that's, that's amazing. exciting. And because of that, we've, I think I've talked about, we planned a retreat. In fact, we have some listeners who told me they're coming. I'm so excited. Um, someday we'll do like a big, huge one with widows and widowers and like a big thing so we can invite everybody. This is starting small, but we eventually want to do, do a big one. Um, you know, people could hear us talk live. That'd be so cool. I mean, <laughs> like we're big time, you know. <laughs> and, you know, it's so fun. Like I meet these people. I know you do too, meet like online and they already like know our stories. They know us. In fact, I have a lot of my grief recovery um, clients come from the podcast. So they feel like they already know me and you <laughs> and it's really fun. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, it's especially touching when you, you know, when we've read the emails from people mm -hmm. saying that like we've helped them and stuff like that. It's, uh. It's really encouraging, and uh, it's just like, oh, man, this is awesome, you know? Yeah, it makes it totally worth it. Um, and we planned out the whole entire year of all the events we're going to do in this area, and we have money to pay for things. And it's so exciting, and more money for um, scholarships for grief recovery and just a lot of great things. So that's an exciting 
And then one, one more thing I wanted to share just in the grief space, and then we'll move forward. Um, uh, I don't, I don't think she'd mind me sharing. So Haley has a hard time like opening up. So that's my 17 year old. She was 14 when her dad died. And, um, we went to the doctor and she had some blood taken. And when we were walking to the car, she just started crying and like, she just doesn't cry. And I was like, what, what's going on? She's like, just reminds me of daddy. Cause he had to get his mm -hmm. blood taken all the time. And just being in a Kaiser building, just everything, mm -hmm. everything just brought it all back. And instead of like, so I've learned through grief recovery, let your kids feel it. Like, don't just try to like make them feel better. So I just let her talk. And you're also not supposed to like physically comfort them. When they're done, you can give them a hug, but to let them talk. And so I even explained that to her, like, I care. And that's why I'm not stopping this. I want you to talk about like, this is healthy. And so she actually opened up and talked for like 15 to 20 minutes about what she was feeling. And um, so I just think that's an important thing for everyone to know if your kids are grieving let them talk about it don't stuff it down like let them ask them more questions and then of course you can give them a hug when you're done talking but don't interrupt like when we like give someone a kleenex we pat their back we whatever we stop their grief like we stop it and so we need to let them fully feel it and so that would be a little bit of advice from that experience and just from what that's I've good learned. advice yeah um that's something that was hard for me when i started leading grief recoveries is like watching people cry and not doing anything but you have to do it like that's what you're supposed to do as a leader and i explain it to everyone like we we love each other but we don't touch anybody we don't send them, give them a kleenex we just let them feel it so that they can heal what we feel we heal you know mm. <laughs> said it like probably a million times on here so anyways i think that's most of my big things oh hayden went back to college so that's been he's been gone like a week or two i don't even know a week and a half so it's going all right but it feels weird like it shifts the family dynamic again and so it's it's been different but we'll be seeing him this labor day we're going out of town and he's meeting us there so we get to see him this weekend which will be really fun nice. yeah labor day it's um, next weekend right yeah this yeah this coming, or this coming weekend yes okay yeah. so we're gonna go like where a lot of my relatives live like three hours away and it's only about a three hour drive for him it's kind of like middle um, and we're going to a three there. hour tour. Uh, th you have, sorry. Three, you haven't sang in a long time, but that's not every, every favorite. time I hear somebody say something's three hours, I can't help it. <laughs> it just happens. The Anyways. ship set ground on the shore of this uh, uncharted yeah. desert isle with Gilligan. Do -do 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 Wait, uh, and his wife. No, 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 the no. Professor. <laughs> The millionaire and his wife. Wait for it. The movie star. The professor and Mary Ann. Here I'm feeling oh, We're so good. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. That's good. It's good stuff. Okay. Now you know, we have. Go ahead. No, this is important. Okay. So I remember one time, and I haven't seen Gilligan's Isle. I used to watch it all the time, but I haven't seen like all the seasons or anything like that. But I strict, I like vividly remember being a kid and seeing there was an episode where they were off the island. They were like in some like building talking to some scientists or something like that. And I just barely tuned into it and tuned out. But I, it's one of those things where I'm like, I swear I remember that. Like I remember really? that. I I, yeah. So I, the whole time. that's, that's, that's what I thought too. But I, I was like, I said, okay, it's, it's possible that it was a dream. I don't think it was. <laughs> it's possible that I was dreaming about Gilligan's Island when I was a kid. But I don't think it was. I think there was an episode where they were off the island. Um, I have to look that up. So You should do that. But let's go ahead Don't and worry, listeners. Episode. I will yeah. fill you in on the next episode, whether or not know. they ever made it off Gilligan's um, Island. Tune okay. in next time to find out. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <Cool>. So, we will. <laughs> so, um... Today's episode, this is, uh, I'm trying to remember it. Hold on. I remember what it's about, but I'm trying to remember the title. How to handle the would have beens. The would be days, but. Yes. Dang it, the would be days. That's so close. close enough. <laughs> okay, so explain what that is. That means this would have been our 20 year anniversary. This would have been his or her birthday. Um, this 
would have been what other special days? Those are the ones we were mostly talking about. The day that, or this was oh. the day they died, yes. or something. Oh, I guess yes. it's under that category. Yeah, this is the day they died. Um, this would be, I mean, we could even go into things like this would be the day that um, we watched our child graduate together, or this mm. would be mm-hmm. on this day. This would be like for me on the 20 year anniversary, it was like, what would we be doing today? Like, Mm. I just kind of went through that in my head. Like, this is what we would be doing. And it was just a weird thought. Like, if Luke had never gotten sick, what would we be doing? Or if he had gotten sick but gotten better. Like, you know, he had cancer twice. What if he had never got it again? What would we be doing? Mm. And it was a very, very strange thing. And so what we're going to talk about in this episode is, like, things. Because you and I do these would-be days differently. Everybody does them differently. But to give you guys some ideas of things that have worked for us. um, So why don't we start with the... Um, I know you just experienced this, the death date, the anniversary of the day they died. What have you done in the past? What's worked for you? What was it like for you this year? Because we've both gone through three of these. The The main thing I do that I've learned is to, even leading up to it, um, not anticipate how I'm going to feel. Mm. Because there's been I remember I think it was year two it was sad but it just kind of felt like another day like it didn't I mean it didn't feel particularly harder for some reason it just didn't year one was like really hard it sucked and this year was really I I I didn't have a very good day overall I had a lot of grief a lot of Mm -hmm. um sadness that I was thinking about like what the heck happened to our life and you know what I mean like um just a lot of uh reality was setting in that day and so it's it wasn't just about grief it was just it was it wasn't only that but it was also like the whoa like that's it's so weird like we had this totally normal life like what happened you know Mm -hmm. and um so it was a lot of stuff like that but so I'd say that's the first thing I do is like the night before I don't anticipate how I'm going to feel. I might Mm. feel fine. I might be broken. Like, but I just go into it knowing like, let's just see how I feel. Um, so that's one of the things I think it's, um, don't be afraid to, to share with people that it's that day. Um, that's another thing. Don't, don't expect people to remember. Um, and if you need to talk to people about it, um, bring it up. So those are um, probably two of the things I would start by saying that are my kind of like go tos. Um, But also like I just I, you know, I feel what I need to feel and I just go with it. And if I want to cry, I cry. If I want to be angry, I'm angry and irritable and I just kind of distance myself. I laid in bed a lot of the day, if I remember right. I think that was the day, Um, you know, it was three weeks ago now, two weeks ago, I don't know, two and a half weeks ago, something like that. So I don't really remember, but, um, I think I was just in bed a lot of the day, Mm -hmm. just kind of laying there. Um, I can't remember if that was the day or if that was a different day I was feeling grief, but, um, I've had some grief this month, but so those are some of the things, um, that I've done. I also, Some, sometimes I look at pictures, sometimes I don't want to look at pictures Mm -hmm. and I do whichever one I want or, um, what's really hard as you know, is Facebook memories Yeah, because I have all these memories of not necessarily on August 13th when she died, but like say tomorrow, like her birthday. Yes. It's like, there's this total like cutoff point, like, yeah. I have all these years and years and years mm-hmm. of wishing her a happy birthday, telling her what a great bride she is, how much I love her, happy birthday, all this stuff. And then all of a sudden it's like, we miss you. I can't believe you're gone kind of right. posts, you know, and it's just very yeah. different. So anyways, um, how about you? Well, I'd like to go back to yours first and talk specifically like what – can you share with the audience what you did like the first year? And is are there things you do with your kids on the death anniversary? And do are you do you involve them in it at all or what what is it like for you guys? Well I'm trying I'm trying to remember Oh, we okay, so um on the day Lacey died, um 
I had some friends come over and um I won't get into the morbidity of that story. Um, but I had some friends come over to be with me and, um, we, you know, had a couple drinks and just kind of hung out and sat around and talked about her and stuff. And then a friend went and picked up sushi because Lacey loved sushi Mm -hmm. and it was something her and I would do together on date nights. And so my friend picked up a bunch of sushi Mm -hmm. and we all just sat there and ate sushi I know some of you are probably gagging right now because sushi like is a me. real, lo- real love it or hate it kind of thing, you know. <laughs> um, but so, uh, so on the one year, um, we got sushi and mm. uh, you know celebrated um, mommy's life. And um, I don't, I don't remember the specifics to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do remember that. And then I know, like on her birthday. We go out and celebrate with like a dessert because that was Lacey's favorite thing in the world. Yeah. So we we do something. Um, yeah. This year, I I didn't even know whether to bring it up to my kids or not. I didn't even know whether to tell them, and I ended up mm-hmm. telling them um, because I was you know moping around the house, and so I wanted to tell. I was like, Hey, I'm sorry, guys. I've just had kind of a tough day because um, today's actually been three years since mommy went to be with Jesus, and. Um, it was really sweet. Alexis is like, Oh, hold on a second. And she went running upstairs and she grabbed, it's the mommy pillow. Mm. And, um, it's something that's like treasured by her because mommy used to use it all the time to like uh-huh. when she was really uncomfortable and it was like this round fluffy pillow mm-hmm. and Alexis really liked it. And mommy totally sacrificed and like gave it to Alexis. Wow. And, um, so Alexis like treasures it. And so she came downstairs and she holds it up to her tummy and then wraps her arms around me. And she's like, let's hug with the mommy pillow. Oh, and sweet. so we, you know, it was just really sweet. And then she offered to like make dinner. It's, it's, she's 10, you know? So, um, sweet. and I don't remember if that was the day where she brought me, um, some homemade tomato soup. <laughs> she, she took cherry tomatoes and mm-hmm. squished them up in water <laughs> and then microwaved it and added a lot of salt. Wow. And I'm not going to lie, it was pretty good, but it wow. wasn't tomato soup. That's <laughs> but cute. it was it was so sweet though and I ate the whole thing. I mean, you have to. You have to eat yeah. the whole thing, you know. That's so so I think I don't remember if that was the day she did that or not, but she did that for me recently and um mm. so anyways, yeah, so that's uh that's kind of that's you know my best answer that I can give for that question right now because that's you know I don't remember a lot to be honest. Mm-hmm. I I kind of mix things together and get confused yeah. over what was what you know. Mm-hmm. So well, we started so the first year, I just had these weird things in my head. On on the one year, I'm taking off my wedding ring. That was something I did. Like, oh I right, just had I remember things that. That I was like, yeah, in one year I'm going to take it off. That's a whole other topic. I feel like take it off when you want. Some people never do. Some people do right away. For me, that's just what I decided to do. Um, And I also, I did, like, this is what I chose to do. I had everybody in my family over, like my brothers, my parents, like everybody that lives around us. And um, I got green and yellow balloons because I was like Luke's favorite Oregon Duck football team were those colors. And we made grilled cheese sandwich because that was his last meal. And oh, yeah. I, played, I had everybody over. We played a video. I was like bawling. It was like the video we made for his um, celebration of life. And then um, we wrote messages on balloons. Please don't email me with all your environmental reasons why we shouldn't have done that. Plenty of people said that to me, <laughs> which I'm like, okay, it's going to be fine for like 15 balloons. It'll be okay. And we wrote messages to Luke. And I have pictures of everybody holding theirs. And my kids did it my my nieces like everybody did it and it was really really powerful just releasing the balloons and just kind of making an event out of it Um, for me that was what some people don't want to do that that was how i dealt with it and we only did it on the first year and then the second year i believe we went out to i think we did red robin luke's favorite place um and yeah, I think that's when, was it his birthday or that? No, I think it's the death anniversary. We shared, um, like, before we shared, like, memories. This time we shared, like, what would you want to tell your dad? Mm. And it was really cool them coming up with, hey, dad, this is what I'm doing now. Like, you'd be really proud of me. And they all shared things that they would w- want to cool. tell their dad. Like, oh, you wouldn't believe what I'm doing now. I believe that was on, yeah, the three anniversary. I mean, two-year 
I don't know. They they kind of mix up in my head too. They do, yeah. And then the three year anniversary, I do know, and I always go to the grave, and um, just sit there and talk to him. But I ask God to give him the messages, you know, all of that. So we did that. Um, Haley wanted to go by herself, so she because she can drive now, so she went by herself. Um, the boys don't want to go to the grave, and that's fine. Everybody does it differently, but she wants to. So she went by herself. I went by myself, and then we all four. Um, and this is, you know, I'm married again, and Joel was this year, the third year, totally like this is your day, like whatever you want to do. And so he understood that I wanted to go out to dinner with just the kids. And so we went to Red Robin, and I think that's when we did that question again. Yeah, the, the, I think on the second year we did what's a memory about your dad, and then the third year we did what would you want to tell your dad. Um, mm, that's so awesome. That's, that's how we did it. And then it was so great. I got home and there were flowers on the table and Joel said, this is, they're from Joel. And he's like, this is for all of you. I'm really sorry for your loss. Wow. So he's such was, a good dude. I know. Good job, Joel. He's amazing. I mean, seriously, the way that he's so sensitive to us, like it's very Luke. unique. Oh my yeah, gosh. It's very unique. I feel so blessed. Like, yeah, so he's blessed. a great guy. Even in even in the um, interactions I've got to have with him, mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, he's such a good guy. He's just got such a good heart, you know. I know. Um, he's just so friendly and kind, and you can just um, you can feel the love of Christ radiating from him, and I love yeah. it. It's awesome. Speaking of, I want to go back to this for a second because I think I told you before we were um, recording, but I want to share this when we did the Hood to Coast run. He meets this guy who's like 20 years old, and the guy's like, I mean, now we're like the people people are asking for advice. He's like, so what's your advice for life? And he's like, Jesus. And he's like, I shared the gospel with him while we were running. I was like, of course you did. That's awesome. <laughs> and Jesus said <laughs> yeah. that all you have to do. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So that That's but so anyways, cool. The point is that. What a great representation. I love it. I know. Like, he really is sensitive and so just kind of side note if you are dating again please only be with someone who is sensitive to you because you don't want some i've heard horror stories of like people who are jealous of the late spouse and all of that yeah are you gonna get over him already or right you know right you love me as much as you love him and you know just all these things and making people have to answer some really horrible questions and it's like no because like I've known you for six months and I was married to him for 25 years or whatever. Some of the stories we've heard, you know, and it's like, don't, don't ask questions. You don't want the answer to, you know, Um, but it's also interesting though, hearing you say this stuff with the different dynamic of the, the children's ages. Yes. Like some of those things you say, like I couldn't really have done with the kids, like particularly Luke, he's too young to like kind of, you know, I don't know. But anyway, so that, that was interesting. I was thinking about that while you were talking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, well, that's interesting. Difference in ages, you know. My kids are like, one is an adult, one's about to be an adult in May, and then the other one's right behind them. So they're like older kids. Um, so it is different versus younger kids. What you do and how you celebrate it, and then let's move on to birthdays. So that was kind of like death anniversaries. What do you do? Or did you already say the one? <laughs> Maybe. Well, I I, chi- I chimed I chimed in and and added that um, what uh, what uh, I've done, but basically, um, you know, I I made a promise to Lacey that of course, like that I'll never stop talking about her, you know, and um, so I like I I tell the kids all through the year, anyways, you know, but like I like to really. Um, talk about like set aside a particular amount of time to like talk about mommy and who she was um and i did remember while you were talking also one of the things i did um on the one year anniversary was um a couple days before i think it was a couple days before i had found some letters that Lacey wrote to the kids Mm -hmm. knowing she was gonna die um and so she wrote some letters to the kids and it was uh i'm not sure they were ready for it yet I might have done it a little prematurely just because it was um, it wasn't that they couldn't comprehend it or anything. It was right. just hard, you know. Yeah. Um, but it was it was it was really sweet. But anyways. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of what, uh, you know, we do on the birthday and it always has to involve dessert. You know, Lacey, yeah. Lacey loved dessert. She would always make a joke. She's like, I don't care how full I am. I have a separate stomach for dessert. So, you know, it's so tomorrow, like I said, we're going out to get some ice cream. There's a little local That's place nice. called Brewster's. They make their own ice cream. Ooh, it is yeah. so good. That's so fun. So, 
Yeah. For Anyways, birthdays, yeah. So what about you? Um, the first year we were actually visiting my best friend Deborah because it was about to be New Year's Eve because his birthday is December thirtieth, and um, Haley wanted to make him a cake. His favorite was cherry chip cake, so she made it for him and we sang to him with Deborah's family, and that was sad. I remember crying because it was still so new. Yeah. Um, and then I think we got root beer floats later. And then the second year, I don't I don't think we did anything. I actually was visiting Joel. That's why we didn't. Do oh, anything. okay. Um, I mean, I think I wished him happy birthday and on Facebook and thought about it. Um, but we didn't do anything as a family. And then this year, I think we just said it was his birthday i think i made a post and the kids might have i don't know so i guess for us birthdays we haven't done as much um i always remember to reach out to his mom because that's mm. the day she gave birth mm. to him and yep. remember um remember her and i think i remembered his sister um too on the birthday um so we haven't i think we do the most with the death anniversaries um not as much with the birthday um and then, yeah, we talked about, like, what we do on Christmas and stuff. That's If you want to hear that one, you can go to Surviving the Holidays or whatever we called it. Um, yeah. But what other, like, do you have other specific things that you do or well, throughout the year yeah. you do? So um, probably one of the harder ones for me is um, our wedding anniversary. Oh, yeah. Um. But also, um, like, our dating anniversary is coming up. September 17th, for us, it was in 2003. So this September 17th will be 20 years. 20 years. Yeah, that's would, would have been, right? Mm -hmm. Would have been 20 years that we were together. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's like, it's such a bummer to have missed it, right? Like, you know, you're like, man, like, yeah. we were like that. Uh, you know, Lacey and I were very much that... Um, example couple to a lot of people of like what a christian relationship looks like a christian marriage and had a lot of people um you know newlyweds and things would ask us like how do you do it like how do you guys like have such a beautiful marriage you know and it was fun it was fun to be that couple that like had had the advice and um you know just so it's it's kind of like it's this feeling of like all of it died Right. Like all, you know, and I've mentioned this before, but like all the inside jokes, all the amount of time that we got to know each other and, you know, all that stuff. And so, um, so anniversaries, particularly, particularly our wedding anniversary, because I remember how excited I was that day. And it was such a beautiful, perfect, um, event like it just everything everything went perfectly because even the little things that didn't go perfectly like we didn't care we were just right. so happy to be getting yeah. married that it didn't matter and um it was just such a celebration and i i remember like the first night we because we had you know we planned and stuff and so we had an apartment together but only she lived there um, and then, so the night we got married, we came home to our apartment for the first time together and, oh, it was just, it was so, it was just such an amazing experience. And then we spent the whole next day opening all the presents from our wedding. And, you know, and of course, Lacey being Lacey, she had a notepad and wrote down who gave us what, so she could write a hundred thank you cards later. Um, and then the day after that, we went on our honeymoon. So, um, for me, that's like the, you know, because her birthday is her birthday. Yeah. Um, the day she died is the day she died, but our anniversary, that was like our day, right? you know, that was our day that we shared together. And so that's why that one is, um, usually the hardest for me. And it's all the memories from that day and from all the posts I've made over the years about just what a lucky man I am to have you. And, um, so seeing that stuff and she looked so stunning, she was mm -hmm. so gorgeous and, um, seeing those wedding photos, it's just, it just reminds me who yeah. she was, you know? And so those are probably the harder, harder ones for me. So and anyways, did, do you find it, uh, difficult this year? Cause it, your anniversary is in April, right? Is that mm -hmm. correct? April 26th. Yep. Okay. So did you find it hard being in a dating relationship again? 
um, like, did it feel weird to you? Like, because now I feel weird, like, being married and having an anniversary. Like, I'm just wondering, in now you dating someone else and then having an anniversary, did it feel different to you than before? It's funny. It's – I personally – have become on those days i become overwhelmed with gratitude for tina Mm -hmm. i I feel so thankful that i'm not doing this day alone that i have somebody Uh. that i feel truly now don't get me wrong lacy's mom has been amazing at listening to me anytime i want to you know anytime we want to have a powwow together she's always a great source to as somebody to talk to but as far as like my friends go and things like that, it's hard to it's hard for me to like unload on people. And so, but um, I feel really grateful for Tina because it's different. Like she really yeah. loves me, you know, yeah. and 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 I can feel it in the way that she's like, no, talk about it, talk about it, you know. And um, it's just great. It's so yes, it's it's so interesting. But I've talked about this in my post that like it's crazy. You can have these two feelings at the yes. same time. I've been I've been literally at the same moment so broken over missing Lacey so much and so grateful for having Tina yeah. and the exact same it's in the same thought process yep. it's not like one separates from the other or that I have one at one moment mm-hmm. and another at another moment it's at the same time and that's something important for people to know because I didn't understand that at first I kind of came right. to that realization where I was like wait like you can have both it, yeah. They don't have to cancel each other out. It's not hypocritical. Um, right. And so for me, I get every time I, you know, remember that I'm in love again and with just such a, another beautiful person that it just makes me so thankful to mm-hmm. um, to have that again, to have that um, that joy in my heart again and and to not just sit there alone Right. Um, with feeling like I can't call anybody and my only outlet is making a post on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so anyways, it's so no, for me, I, I would definitely not describe it as as weird at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it it's just I, I just want to be real that. Yeah, there's always things that are going to be hard. Because. um you know, you, you still miss them, you know, but you can, you can be grateful at the same time and that's okay. So yeah, anyways, I, I wanted to, sorry, agree. I kind of got off track a little no, bit. No, no, no. <laughs> kind of goes along with what I want to talk about. So anniversary, so mine's really fresh, August 22nd. So I wrote this post. This is the most conflicted I've ever felt on our, my anniversary because of the 20 years and because I'm married again. So, hmm It's just so weird. So this is what I wrote. Um, 20 years ago today, I married Luke. If things had gone differently, I wonder how we would have celebrated today, probably an Alaskan cruise. Luke didn't really love heat and sand, so that was his dream kind of vacation. Today, I have such conflicting emotions. This is my first anniversary that I'm married again. Yes, I'm so incredibly happy in my new marriage, but my heart is hurting thinking of how different my life would be today for myself and my kids if Luke had lived. Today would be a joyous day of celebrating the 20 years we had weathered the storms. We would be reminiscing about all the good times we had and the hard times we survived. I'm sure we would watch our wedding video with our kids and laugh at ourselves and our goofy dance moves. But life rarely turns out the way we think. I don't understand the things God allows. I don't understand why I don't have my husband of 20 years today and why my kids are growing up without their amazing dad. But I do have faith and trust. I do know that if God allowed it, I can accept it. I do have the hope of heaven and seeing Luke again. I'm glad when these pictures were taken 20 years ago that we didn't know what was to come. But I can tell you 100% that I would do it all over again. God has taught me over and over the past few years that he chose me to be Luke's wife and to walk him through cancer and death. He chose me out of all the people in the world, and that is a huge honor. Although I only got 17 years as Luke's wife and I wish it was a lifetime, I feel blessed for the years I had with him. Being married again does not cancel out the love I had and still have for my first husband, Luke. My heart is expanded to love them both. Happy anniversary, Luke. I will always love you. Mm. And I feel like that was like I was able to express what I was feeling that like, you know, because some people think, oh, you're happily married again. So you probably don't have grief. Well, that's not true. Like you still have these moments where you're just like, it can still hit me out of the middle of nowhere and be like, whoa, Luke died. Like, it's just the strangest thing, even though I know yeah. it's been three years. It's just Yeah, like... go back and listen to our episode, Grief is Weird. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we and talk so... all about this stuff. 
Yeah. And so that's, it's today. I mean, I think that was my biggest grief day I've had in like years was our, you know, would be, would be, yeah, that's a big, that's a big one. Yeah. That's a big a, one. You know, and what's the traditional gift for that? Isn't there like traditional, like something made of wood is for 10 Maybe. years or something? I, I think remember. that's why I gave Lacey a cutting board. I don't know. Okay. I don't remember that, but there is stuff. Like, yeah, I think it's like night, gold, gold or I don't know. Yeah. And the night before we were, or was that morning? I don't know. We were about to get on a plane. It was the day before. And I was like, this would be my like rehearsal day. Like 20 years ago, this was my rehearsal day. Like we, like, it's just weird thinking about if I knew then that I would be like with Joel in Boston, like I'd be so confused if my, if I had been able to flash forward 20 years and be like, mm. what am I doing with this guy that I'm in college? Where am I? What's happening? You know, it's just like so strange. It's surreal and sometimes. It is. Yeah. But I, I look at the, the positive and like, I'm so, I'm thankful for the time I had with Luke. Um, and I'm so thankful that God did bless me with another person. Not everybody desires that, but that was a huge desire for me. Um, and I'm so thankful, um, for that. So anything else? Yeah. Some people, some people are built, um, to be alone after they lose their spouse. Some people are not. So we've seen a lot of things. So I just want to address it. It doesn't mean that you loved your spouse any less because like, I'm not built to be alone. I don't want to be alone. (laughs) And I, I like, I like having a partner. I like sharing life with somebody and, um, I'd rather go through um I'd rather go through the pain of potentially losing somebody because that's a big fear all Me of us too. have yes. is losing another spouse like yep. Stacy walked through. Yes. Um that's a huge fear and but to me it's worth it. It's it's worth the yeah. the fear and and we do have to tell ourselves especially those of us who are on the younger side compared to some other of our listeners. Um, I know some of our listeners would be like, y'all are old. I don't know yeah, what you're talking 29. about. But compared to some of our listeners, we're on the younger side. And so, like, especially for us, we don't want to spend the rest of our lives alone, you know? Yeah. Um, so anyways, but that's interesting because I want to read the Facebook post I made um, the day before uh, our anniversary also, okay. because, um, some, one of the things you said reminded me of it too. Um, when you said, uh, I wish I didn't know or something like that. I don't remember exactly uh, what you said, if, but yeah, I'm glad I didn't know basically. Yeah. So I mentioned something like that in the post, but also I want to convey like exactly what I was talking about. The feelings like seem like they'd be conflicting maybe to somebody who doesn't understand, but this is like, you know, uh, my heart, our heart and a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff. But so, uh, tomorrow it has been three years since Lacey went to be with Jesus. Gosh, a lot can change in five years. We felt so complete and life felt as perfect as it could be for us. Please remember that you have no idea what is right around the corner in life. Mm-hmm. I encourage you to be loving and kind every single day. And then I quoted a song from Bob Seeger called Against the Wind. Uh, I wish I didn't know now what I didn't mm-hmm. know then. And that took me a while to understand, but when I, th- I wish I didn't know now what I didn't know then. Um, it it's, takes t- took me a minute to kind of uh, wrap my head around that. But um, uh, and I said he was talking about finding out he was being cheated on in the song. But I feel like I relate to that expression. It's so shocking to me how different life is now. Five years ago, I was so happily married to this extremely special woman. We were raising kids together. We were tra- we traveled and shared a lot of laughter. She always wanted to cook for me and serve me. I fixed anything that was broken, completed honeydew lists, and served her really well too. We tag teamed parenting the kids and split the duties and responsibilities so well. We had both been through seasons of being stay at home parents and understood each other's roles and stresses remarkably well. I had a great job and life was so good in Lake Elsinore, California. We had a great church and a lot of really good hearted friends. We hosted barbecues and loved having people to our house, over to our house. We had fulfilled our dream of having a fun house with lots of things to do when people came over. We were loving our life and felt so grateful. We constantly prayed for and with each other and lifted each other up when we felt down. Lacey was an incredible wife and mother, and we miss her so much. Since then, Lacey got diagnosed with cancer. We went through a pandemic, and our life fell apart. She passed away three years ago tomorrow. I've started a podcast with a friend. Shout out. Uh, Shout I sold out. our I sold our house, moved to Tennessee, bought a new house that Lacey has never seen, and started a new life. 
through the podcast, I met a beautiful and amazing woman named Tina, fell deeply in love with her, got my high school diploma, completed real estate school, thanks to Tina's encouragement, and started a new career. I've learned how to cook and have become obsessed with keep, keeping a clean house. It's just so weird how much life can change in such a short period of time. Mm -hmm. We miss Lacey so much, and I really hope she can see our lives. I hope she is proud of us for persevering. I think she asked Jesus to take care of us because God has truly brought beauty from ashes in our lives. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what the next five years will look like. You can plan all you want, but things can change that are beyond your control. I encourage you who've made it this far in the post to look at the things that are good in your life. Do not focus only on your problems. Choose Jesus, choose love, choose kindness, choose gratitude, and choose positivity. I'm posting this today knowing that tomorrow might be a hard day. We love you, Lacey, and we miss you so much. I hope you can see how well the kids are doing. Thank you for being such a, a great wife. Thank you for being such a dedicated and amazing mother. Thanks to you, I made it to the other side of the storm. Thank you for teaching me how to persevere and how to see how good life is. And this, this I love just being able to say, you would love Tina. Mm -hmm. She is so good to me and so good to the kids. We really miss you. I pray Jesus shares my words with you. Your mom and I talk about you often, and I'm still really close with your parents. We all miss you, but are so happy thinking about you getting to be with Jesus every day. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for loving us so well. We miss you always. And there was a mm -hmm. picture of the four of us there. And it's just so interesting because, like, it can feel like I'm bouncing back and forth right. on what, but to me, all those things coexist. Yeah. And I love knowing that Lacey would have loved Tina. Like yeah. she really would have. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think they would have been great friends, you know? Um, and that's like a really cool thing for me to like, to know, you know? Yeah. So anyways, that was, uh, that was a hard, uh, it, it was hard to, it's hard to write stuff like that sometimes, like, well, because really I, because I'm so concerned about judgment from people. Oh, like I, cause I feel like, I feel like some people think, well, like, oh, well, he's happy now. That's cool. He's moved on. Uh -huh. Right. We all experience that. And it's like, no, like I can have both. I can miss Lacey and I can love Tina and those things can exist together. So anyways, that's, that's all I have to say about that. Okay. Forrest. <laughs> yeah. I think they just, people need educated sometimes that, so, yeah, you're, it's like when you have more than one child, your heart expands to love them both. I feel like that way about having another spouse. I love that. I remember when you, uh, came up with that. I'm going to say came up with it because I, I don't know I if you read it somewhere. It somewhere oh, okay. I don't remember where. I was like, that is good. That's that's so what it's like. That like, is. Cause I remember when Lacey was pregnant, like I was like, oh my gosh, I was scared. <laughs> I was like, how am I going to love another kid as much as yeah. I love Alexis? And then it's like, as soon as he was born, I was like, oh, like, <laughs> you know, I love you, you know? And, um, it, it is, you're right. Like your heart just like expands and there's just like more room in your heart mm -hmm. for more love. So yeah. Anyways, so what would your advice be to somebody who maybe hasn't faced any of these days yet? Maybe they're in their first couple months. They haven't passed the, the I don't even know what to call it, the death anniversary. Yeah. Um, they haven't passed a birthday yet, haven't passed an anniversary yet. What would you tell them to anticipate I, and your advice? Okay. Um, to anticipate that not everyone's going to remember that for me has always been a hard thing. I get my feelings hurt and all of this because people didn't reach out, but they don't know all those dates. Like a lot of people don't remember. They know, like might remember the month that it happened, but they don't remember mm -hmm. the date. Um, so I've had to tell people, this is important to me. Here's the dates. Mm -hmm. Um, so just not to get your feelings hurt if people don't, um, reach out but if you want people to reach out like a specific specific people then let them know like these are going to be here's the hard days that are going to be coming up for me could you please reach out to me especially in that first year people are there and they want to help you but also to kind of what you said like feel whatever you're feeling like let it be okay if you cry let it be okay if you don't cry let it be okay like whatever you're feeling on that day is okay. And then for me personally, I, especially the first year, I liked planning those days. Some people don't like mm. that. I wanted a plan for the one year anniversary. Like that was really important to me. I had all these things I wanted to do. Um, and then I, you know, I planned on the first, yeah, his first birthday and first anniversary. Oh, that one was hard because it was two months after he died. 
So mm. that was super, super hard. But I had planned to at least um, go out to dinner with my – I went to the grave and then went to dinner with my kids, and then I think we watched a movie. So for me, having a plan helps. Um, I did have a newer widow ask me this. She was about to face – I think it was her first anniversary without her husband and was asking me advice. Should I keep busy? Should I do this? And I'm like, I think if you allow some downtime – she was wanting to know should she go on this trip or not. Um, and I said, as long as you – with other people, I'm like, as long as you can plan in some downtime because – I think it, it ended up being a good thing for her to be able to be busy, but also have time alone. So she was able to do both because they understood where she was at. Um, so everybody, it's different. But for me, it's like having a plan. Even if your plan is mm. I'm going to stay home and do nothing like that. Like, I think there should be some kind of plan going into it. I really think that's big. And to enlist people to help you, fam family and friends, like these are going to be hard days. Could you reach out to me? Mm -hmm. Just don't think that people are going to remember even your best friend. Like, even this year, this, I had, yeah, it was hard. I had a hard time this year. So, um, just knowing that people, it doesn't mean they don't care. Like, I, I get hurt feelings a lot because I'm, I'm like really good at reaching out to people. And so mm -hmm. I get hurt feelings when people don't reach out. You know, though, something, th this is like applicable advice that I've given to other people. I've even given this advice to my kids about things when they've talked about like mean kids or whatever. Mm -hmm. In you being good at reaching out to other people, for that to be special, you, you have to know that other people aren't good at it. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, I mean, I know it's still hurtful, but that. like it is, it is something that is, um, that you are good at. Um, and it's a skill, you know, it really is a skill. And it's, um, it's not that, like you're saying, it's not that other people don't care. Um, it's just some people are scatterbrained, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty scatterbrained. Like I, I forget things all the time. Um, but it's interesting, like other things I can remember. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so, uh, Anyways, I, but I think that's like I tell my kids that when they like say someone was like being mean to them, I'm yeah. like, you have to remember, though, like in order for you to be a nice kid and to be your heart to be so special, like there has to be mean kids. Mm, and she's like, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, I'm like, because otherwise yeah. everybody's nice, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. And I, I have this friend that she always remembers our anniversary because it's her birthday. And then I always remember her birthday because it's her anniversary. Mm. So she reached out to me that's first helpful. and was like, how are you doing? So actually... Um, a couple people on the uh, like our would be anniversary reached out to me this year, um, but yeah, it is helpful. I never forget her birthday. She never forgets, and it used to be she <laughs> always wished me happy anniversary on that day. And now she's always like, "How are you doing?" Thinking of you today, you know. Um, it's really nice, but I think that for me personally, that'd be my biggest advice is if you need people to reach out to tell them ahead of time, very specifically. Here are the dates. I could really use a text, but also don't mm. be crushed if they forget. <laughs> That's yeah, that's that's probably good good advice. <laughs> yeah, because that Cause is I've I've done that stuff too, where I'm like, man, it's like nobody remembers, you know, but nobody remembers, you know. Right. I mean, and some then, people do, but you know. And then you can go down um, an ant. This is what my um, counselor says: automatic negative thoughts. Like you go down an ant hill, like like, oh, they don't care about me, blah blah. blah. And then you have this big thing that just yeah. So you have to have your Spiral. ant leader saying, no, that's not true. Like they really mm. do care. They're just all busy. Like. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. Like, it's a whole different. And then I've also noticed this is totally off topic, but like a shift. Like I have not seen friends near as much as I did before I got married. But my life for years, even when Luke was sick, he couldn't do much socially. So my life for years was tons of activities with friends. And now I'm married again. And I think people just assume that I'm with Joel, which I am pretty much all the time. But we're making it a point. He's trying to still like make friends in this area. In fact, tonight I think he's going to a men's group thing and like trying to make a point of still getting out and seeing friends but that's been a whole a whole shift and and there's this whole like that's a whole other topic about like i'm widowed but i'm not a widow like this whole mm. thing that i'm going through right now like where do i fit exactly and um anyways that's a whole other thing. well i and i remember talking about that before and i i kind of liked the thing i came up with that it's it's not a title it's something that happened to you yeah exactly yeah I think and really so cool. you know you'll always be widowed yeah, that's where we landed on our retreat, too. Like, if you have been widowed, you are a widow. Like, you can come, yeah. you know, because it was like, well, I'm not officially a widow anymore, but I'm leading this, but I have been widowed, just like our podcast, you know. 
were still like widowed. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. That was a whole other yeah. Thing. And I think something I would give people to, um, as advice is if you're dreading that day, plan to do something like, yeah. don't just, if, if like, if, if you're really like, I mean, of course you want to feel what you're going to feel, but if like, you're afraid of the day, mm. Because we've definitely dealt with that. We've heard that from people. They're afraid of the day that's coming. Like, make a plan. Like, go do something. Try to keep your mind off of it. Even if it's, like, going for a walk or something simple. Um, try to do something to, to help you get through the day. So, um, Yeah, that's good. I think that would be good. And uh, writing writing helps a lot of people. Yes. Don't forget sure. that writing is an outlet for a lot of people. Like, write your late spouse a letter. Yeah. Um, I think that can be really powerful and, and help help get the tears out too. Cause like it can make you start crying or, um, just make a video mm. where you're just talking to him or something, you know, and, um, where yeah, you're telling him outlet. the things you would want to say. Yeah. Creative outlet. That's a great mm -hmm. way to say it. Um, and you know, we've gotten some flack for saying this in the past, but it is biblical that we are not supposed to try to contact the dead. Mm -hmm. That is biblical. Right. So, but I don't feel like it's unbiblical to ask Jesus to share your words and then to speak freely yeah, um, and feel like you're, but, but we are not supposed to. And I know that's, that's hard for some people, but um, we are a Christian based show. And so we're trying to go off of what the Bible says. Right. And um, I didn't make that up. We didn't make that up. That's what it says that we are not to contact the dead. So yeah. I, I'm saying that because I was remembering a comment we got um that somebody um gave us a lashing um oh, yeah. <laughs> so i'm like hey i didn't make it up i'm just going off what god says you know and yeah he's the god of the universe he created everything so i'm pretty sure he can make the rules um yeah. so anyways that's my that's two cents good. on that i almost went into forrest gump again i know you're you can't have two forest references in one podcast well, I mean, we can yeah. just maybe not maybe not the same one well, you know I like i could one. drop a like you running. and little for it yes okay that's running. a good one that that's on applicable one so you decorate your vans and you have like band names and this one was all about forrest gub and it was like it was like i'll keep running or something like that it was <clears throat> oh, here from that day on if i ever went anywhere <laughs> i was running <laughs> It's actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I've been practicing for years. You know, I'm I'm waiting for the sequel so I can be part of it. I want to be like Teenage Forest. That'd be awesome. Nice. <laughs> yeah, no, awesome. I think you're I think you're mix, mixing it up with uh Finding Dory Just Keep Swimming. Just keep swimming. Yeah, it's kinda of like a mix of the two. Or Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. That one's from Dory Finding Nemo. It. Yeah, with Dory says swimming. it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Well would you like Anyways. to uh, close us out in prayer? Yes, I would. Okay, thanks. Lord, thank you so much for, um, again, for the ways that you have blessed this ministry. And I, I'd like to pray that you would continue blessing widow goals so that Michelle mm -hmm. can keep giving scholarships and, and helping widows um, and, and widowers, if that comes up too. And um, just that uh, you continue blessing us with the ability to um, speak to people, to help people, mm -hmm. that somehow you've allowed us to do this. And um, I just thank you so much and I'm so humbled by that, that you've used us in this way. Um, I'd like to pray, Lord, for all of those who are going through difficult days, for all of us. Um, I'd like to pray that, um, you know, that you reach, that you put your hand on people's shoulders and are just there with them as they're going through these tough days and let them know that you are here with us mm -hmm. and um, that even when we can't feel it, you're still here and... Um, so I'd just like to pray for everybody out there who's who's experienced this incredible loss um, that we call widowhood and that you would um, be with all of us. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you liked this podcast, give us a little bing. Five stars, five stars on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, any place you listen, or take another 30 seconds to write a little um, review. That would be awesome. It helps get the word out. And it is exciting. We're in like, I don't know, how many countries have you checked recently? 70 something. 70? 70. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty exciting. I think it's like, 71 or we're 72. We're steadily growing. And we're also on YouTube. We are up to like 92 subscribers. So pretty We're exciting. famous. We're famous. We're famous. So check us out on YouTube <clears throat> and um, all the places. 
all the things. I can't remember what else I would say. Oh, yes, if you've been touched by this ministry, you could help support Widow Goals, which not only helps provide the podcast, it provides retreats, events, and scholarships for people to go to Grief Recovery. Um, there's a link in the description. And if you want to know more about Grief Recovery, reach out to me. It's a seven-week uh, one-on-one program that has been absolutely amazing. It's helping so many people. So I think that's it for today. And that's awesome. And thank you guys for listening. Like, we really appreciate it. And if you want to email us, you can reach out at widowed too soon at widowgoals.org. That's our new one. We still get emails at the old one because it still says it on our old one. That's fine. We'll get it anywhere. And and so. tell us honestly what you think about me being a teenage Forrest Gump. <laughs> I want to. I want the feedback. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's that's great. We'll put it as a poll because we can make. A yes, poll. a poll. <laughs> yeah, no, don't do that. No, don't I don't want. That. I can't handle rejection. Right. Everyone's like, no. No, thank you. Hundred <laughs> percent. Right. Well, thanks for being here, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye. God bye. bless.